What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be covering my weapon attachments and all of my in-game settings that I've been using the entire time since I've started playing this game. Realize with my settings, I run a 1440p 240Hz monitor with a half millisecond refresh rate, so your settings might vary a little bit. Um, the game can be played up to 2K, but with uh, the way the performance is, I don't go past 1440. Um, just because I want to get as many frames as I can. The 2K quality is pretty nice compared to the 1440, but it's not worth uh, losing 15 to 20 frames. So keep that in mind and take it for what it's worth. Uh, kind of looking over the overall stats that I've had over the last 1,600 hours or so of in-game playtime. That's kind of what we're looking at. Um, KD, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, I've got almost 275,000 kills total. And... Um, We'll go through the weapons. Uh, the main ones that I pretty much use are the M5, the SCAR, the Bison MP9, K30, PBX. So it's still a little lackluster, but it is viable now. Uh, ignore this. Most of this was done in the Zombies game mode. If anybody was around for that, it was basically free AI farming that would give you anything you wanted tier 1. Uh, since I didn't need any of the weapons tier 1, I just farmed the LCMG with my buddies until they took the server down. As for the BSV, yep, BSV is still broken, as we see here. Uh, and then the snipers, SWS is my quickscope go-to. I do have a lot of long-range kills with the DXR back when my was soul flaming. Shotguns are meh, honestly. The 12M is still pretty broken. I would not recommend the crossbow. And then uh, pistols and whatnot. So going into the weapon attachments first. I'm just going to kind of go down the line. Uh, pistols, really, I only run the Magnum. The only time I don't run the Magnum is with the Sniper, and I'll run the MP28. And so, as we can see here, I really just have the Champion Muzzle Break, the Drum Mag, and the Laser for it. And that's really it. Uh, for the SMGs, I'm not going to cover the PBX. It is the only one that I'll run the Champion Muzzle Break on. Uh, but other than that, the other s SMGs are going to be running the Rab Suppressor or Factory Barrel. I often swap between the two. Uh, depending if I want to be off the radar or not, or if I want the better bloom slash bullet spread. The suppressors do have a hidden stats where they debuff your bullet spread and increase it. So you do have a slight nerf to your spread at distance, but overall, if you're playing close and getting in and trying to hit flanks with this, it doesn't really matter. Your spread's going to be almost non-existent with the close combat range. So the within the 30 meters, you're not really worried about spread at that range. But for the Bison, which is my most kill weapon in the game, which has been... The only weapon to use when the game first came out is the Rab Suppressor or the Factory Barrel. I just have this here, but I don't actually ever use it. And then I rotate between these two. I still run the Fusion Hollow. Just the, the, your dots are all going to be personal preference. Uh, iron Sights for memeing every once in a while. I personally hate the iron, iron Sights on it, but I always run the standard rounds for this. And because I play Angel, I never run out of ammo, but you've got the high power and subsonic rounds. I do not recommend subsonics personally. I think the recoil behind them doesn't benefit you at all with the damage output it has it does carry damage further than the standard rounds but 53 rounds to 64 now you see you notice that it says magazine size 75 that is incorrect it is 65 that is 54 this is 54 okay these the, the numbers are wrong also with the standard rounds you always get a, a rate of fire increase you notice that with these two guys it's 700 rpm this is 750 moving on to the mp9 same type of deal here Rab suppressor or the factory barrel. I just kind of have this for memes to test it out every once in a while. I personally don't like the TAC compensator. However, this is quote unquote the meta barrel attachment. And I will run that on the SCAR every once in a while. But for SMGs, I just kind of figure no negative impacts are better. So, and then BCG like rip or the laser sight. And then close combat extended. The reason I use this over the drum mag is this only gives you two mag so you get one and then one in reserve whereas this gives you four in reserve so and the reload speed's a little quicker so switching off the drum this is a very long reload time compared to this guy for the k30 i only run factory barrel or the wrap suppressor that is it bcg light grip or the laser sight and the drum mag no real reason to run the extended mag unless you want the increased rate of fire you get the extra 50 but yeah, this thing's a laser beam anyways. 
For the M5, still, after the change to the close combat rounds for the M5 and the MP9, close combat rounds are still the go-to. You got a 960 rate of fire with this compared to the 910. So you got an AEK type esque weapon in 2042 this is the closest weapon in the game that you would get to the aek for all you aek enjoyers who would you know be hopping break cameras if you guys were that uh quote unquote sweaty this is the build you want the short barrel close combat rounds bcg or laser sight either one does not matter ak i personally run the factory barrel i see the tac comp a lot or i see the champion muzzle break if you are having issues with recoil control, the default is the champion muzzle break. That is going to give you the best vertical recoil control with a little bit of horizontal jitter, but that is very manageable. So if you're having trouble initially, switch to the champion muzzle break, and then as you get better with recoil control and pulling down, start switching it up, maybe testing some other stuff out. And again, I always have the wrap suppressor on these things for uh, the scar and the AK for that flank ability and not being on the radar. Standard issue extended over the drum, kind of the same reason with the MP9. This reload speed is pretty long and you only get one in reserve. Whereas this one you get four in reserve. And then I always run the BCG. I don't really use the laser for this one. I'm not really hip firing the AK a whole lot. Um, when I play with the AK, I tend to sit more medium range. This does do well, medium range. You see the rate of fire is 300 RPM less than the M5. So you get in a close-up engagement with the M5. You need to land a headshot if you want to win that gunfight. Otherwise, you're just going to lose the rate of fire. The SCAR, high-powered drum mag, wrap suppressor, or the factory. I run the TAC every once in a while. It, it does pretty well with the weapon accuracy. But um, really, this is the medium range of the hip fire on this. It's kind of lax. And I'm wondering if that's because of the hidden debuff to the under barrel attachments even though they quote unquote fixed it i'm not fully convinced that the hip fire doesn't take a penalty because of these grenade launchers being on here um and then the standard rounds but again i run angels so i never run out of round. i don't use this is a 20 round mag so you know if you're playing mckay and you're good and you stay alive long enough and you're not finding ammo this is kind of the trade-off that i do so and then again site preference uh, also notice with the dlc skin it's not really dlc it's more of the in the store this is one of the pay to win red dots it is very nice however the issue is it does have a little bit of a glitch at the base and the red dot moves with the character model so it sways what i mean by that is when you are strafing so when you do ad or you move left and right on your stick whichever input you prefer that site is going to move with your character model so the outer edge of the sights so I'm talking about the mirror, the glass will move left or right with your character strafing, but the dot will always stay center. It's a little disorienting at first and it takes a little bit to get used to, but if once you get used to that, it's money personally. But if you're not liking the skin, just go with the standard skin and use the fusion or whatever site you like. I'm not gonna cover the AC-42 because I don't use it anymore, really. You can full auto this thing and it does have some sort of counter to the medium long range fight with other ARs but close range seems to kind of lackluster a little bit sometimes the hip fires a beam sometimes it's just all over the place there's not really any consistency for this but as you can see there's the light the bcg like grip and the champion muzzle break and i do that on purpose so that way the um <clears throat> horizontal recoil kicks in and that's kind of what helps you make this shoot full auto and there's a video that i have on my channel for how to do that um lcmg and pkp not touching these i don't ever touch them anymore so dmrs i really don't touch these but um you know dm7 i run either standard rounds or close combat with the factory barrel that's it or the suppressor phone staff radar and then bcg light grip or the laser sight but again i don't really enjoy play the play style with dmrs outside of the bsv because this is not a dmr i'm sorry this thing needs to be down here it's an ar okay Short barrel or long barrel. I don't use a standard barrel. Don't ask me why. I'm not really sure. I just didn't like it. The long barrel will give you a more hit scan feel with the bullet velocity buff DMR's got. I prefer this sight, and the reason I per prefer the hybrid over the K hollow is because this gives you more versatility. So I can effectively fight somebody medium range, or if I start playing close range, within the 50 meter AR range, I can switch to the red dot. This gives you a red dot. So this isn't a traditional red dot, right? It's the Chevron, the green Chevron, which is still very good, but I prefer the red dot. And then standard high powered extended subsonics and then the close combats. 
I don't ever touch the close combats. There's no reason to, and this is so overpowered still. And then BCG light grip. Uh, for the snipers, I'm only going to talk to the SWS, really. I don't touch the DXR anymore. There's still an issue with the pull of the mat or the bolt to the rechamber to the visual indication that the rifle is ready to shoot again, and it's not. So there's a visual bug, and it still hasn't been fixed. So that kind of throws off the pacing. Plus, the rate of fire is just so much lower than the SWS. You see my rate of fire is 70 with the build I have right now compared to this. But with the SWS, I've been using this for my quickscope videos that I've been posting on Reddit or Twitter or what have you. And so I'm running the short barrel, close combat rounds, and a 6X with the rattlesnake, which I'm actually going to switch out to the laser sight after I just saw one of my other buddies post a clip. So I think if you want to be aggressive with this, I'd swap these two and use the laser sight. I'm going to test out the laser tomorrow when I get back on stream. Uh, if you want to do traditional sniping, medium long range stuff, your 6X, 8X, 10X scope is actually really good. It's a very clean sight picture with a dot in the center. Um, just be careful with the bullet drop. It's, it is an open sight picture, so you don't have the tick marks to kind of help with the distance for the bullet drop since you can't zero in your snipers anymore like you could in previous battlefields like BF4. Uh, so if you want to do normal sniping like that, you want to do the long barrel, the standard extended, and then high power or so forth and then if you're the the under barrel if you're just doing normal sniping doesn't actually really matter because it's a bolt action so you're not getting penalized for anything here so this is just kind of a placebo effect but if you want to play aggressive these two attachments are what you want and then scope of your choice and that's really all i'm going to cover besides the 12 m slugs still one shot they're still broken i prefer short barrel over the standard 2x laser sight pretty generic build so that's all the weapons okay let's go look at the settings real quick for you guys so i'm gonna go through everything i'm not gonna talk to everything this is general we don't care about this stuff so i'm kind of just gonna scroll down for you until you know we get there at the bottom and i will let you guys watch this as many times as you want to get these numbers this is what I have for the monitor that I have. If you have a monitor similar to this, this will work well for you. If you don't, if you're playing on 1080p, maybe adjust the brightness a little bit, maybe adjust your field of view. If you don't like max field of view, max field of view is gonna give you the most situational awareness. However, with some of the things that I've been told, some people get a little bit disoriented with having so much because it is not the same field of view as per se Warzone or Apex. So the 105 actually feels more like 120 to some people. I know it's a little confusing for, for guys who are more of a casual player or not competitive or this or that, but this is what I run. Um, I do recommend if you're in a vehicle, max this out for your third person field of view. Just max it out. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see a whole lot. ADS field of view on. What this does is when I ADS my weapon, so when I zoom in, the field of view that I have set to 105 is going to match my zoom level with the scope. So if I had this off, the scope is going to zoom into the default setting. And if you guys didn't know, the default setting for the game is 55 field of view. So your scope is going to zoom into a 55 field of view screen. So everything is going to zoom in. So your target's going to look bigger, but you're going to have more visual recoil as you zoom in. The reason that I have this on is so that when I zoom in and matches my field of view, you get less visual recoil. This is going to help with your recoil control. It is more or less a placebo effect, quote unquote. However, it is visually more appealing to the eye to fire your weapon and see no movement from the scope whatsoever. And that is kind of what it, that gives you. That's my brightness. All of my settings are gonna be low, except for high fidelity objects. The reason I have this set to ultra is this is gonna help you with seeing objects, players at the maximum distance that your graphics card can upload, CPU, CPU intensive game, but really it should be the GPU loading this stuff for you. So this is why, because I still fly in the helicopters, I have this set to ultra. And this does help with the, you know, the BSV and sniping. If I sit back a little bit, you know, the, the player models stand out a little more. You'll notice in the game, as you start to run up to another objective, some of the terrain and the objects like the sandbags or someone's crate from Angel or something like that will eventually pop up on the screen because it takes time for this to load. That's why that's ultra. But 
if you're a visually appealing player, you want to be immersed in the graphics, which I hate to break it to everybody. The graphics for 2042 are, aren't better than BF4. Hot take, but they're not. So I prefer performance over visual appearance, and everything is low. Dynamic resolution, it's off. DLSS is off. Ray tracing is off. And I have this enabled for boost. The reason I have this off is the game's performance is terrible. I don't need a clearer picture. I'd rather have more frames than a more crisp slash sharp image, if you will. Latency flash off, future rendering, and this is gonna, this will help with the visual, right? So if I turn this on, it'll buffer the future frames, so you get less frames, but the picture seems to be a little more smooth, but if I have this off with V-Sync off, I get maximum frames, but if the game takes a shit on me in the middle of the game and I drop a bunch of frames, I'm gonna notice the tearing. So real quick for the HUD stuff, camera shake amount to put that all the way down. You can't set it to zero, set it to 20. Oh, that's gonna help with like the shell shock effect in the game. Colorblind settings, do whatever you want. HUD scaling, personal preference. Crosshair, again, this is all personal preference. I run magenta for the crosshair, just seems to stand out on all the maps. And yep. For the minimap, this is a little different. This is what I use. Minimap view distance on foot. So if you're playing infantry, 85. I do not recommend setting this any higher than a 110. And the reason for that is, is once you get past that, you're starting to get so much situational awareness or SA that you will now lose your close combat SA, meaning the minimap is gonna be too big once you get into those close CQC fights that when enemies pop up on the map, everything's gonna look super far away from you when really they're right next to you, but you really can't def tell the difference. I'm fumbling through that word, but anyways, not being able to realize they're closer than the, what they see, like objects and mirrors are closer than they appear type deal. So I keep this at 85. I found like for me, this is a good enough middle ground to where I can see far enough out with the ranges that I play where I know where people are gonna be based on where they're shooting and the dots pop up. And it's close enough to the mini map that I can see people who are close to me and I can accurately tell where people are based on that visual dot coming up in audio cues. Mini map distances for vehicles is set to max. And the reason you set this to max is you're not hunting infantry. You set this to max so you know what the ground picture is for the rest of the vehicles on the map, okay? Set this as max so you know where vehicles are gonna be, where the wildcats are, tanks, jeeps, whatever, helicopters, okay? Not, not gonna really help a whole lot if you're on a tank and you see a jet. I'm not really worried about the jet unless I'm trying to shoot it out, but it's harder to track a jet than you know everything else is slower moving. So set that to max, that'll help you. The downside to this is infantry are gonna be a little harder to see on the minimap, but really when you're in a tank, you're gonna be looking for infantry and vehicles at the same time. And if you're a smart player, you're on a swivel, you're moving the turret, you're staying in third person until you're shooting and some people even prefer to shoot in third person. And then this is all my personal preferences. It really just comes down to how much of the mini map do you wanna see. So opacity, the lower this is, the more opaque it is and see-through. So you see more of the game on the bottom left of your map than you would if you've got this all the way to 100. Most of the time, this isn't an issue. I'm not really concerned with things being in the bottom left of my screen anyways. So set these to what you want. HUD icons. These are what I have. Again, your personal preference to whatever you want to set these. This is what I've used. I've considered tweaking some of these here and there every once in a while. Sometimes I think the uh, enemies don't show up bright enough for me or friendlies are too opaque out and they're too hollow. But... For the most part, this does well for me. So I'll just slowly scroll down and then you, you know, obviously you guys can always, you know, rewind and come back to these numbers. And then I think it kind of scrolled past a little bit there. So I'll bring it up. For my sound settings, um, again, this is gonna be different for anyone else. I per, I, Personally use the Astro A40s with the mix amp. So I've already got the, you know, Dolby 7 whatever surround. But, so the game can get loud and I can adjust my volume on the mix amp. So I keep it at 72 in game. And then if I need to make it louder or a little more quiet, I'll just move the dial on my mix amp. 
I don't care for the music. Some people like it. I hate it. Sound effects, in-game, announcer, sure. Really, this can get turned to zero. Some people are, are telling me, hey, just turn it off. Why are you letting them talk? Eh, doesn't really bother me. Just like music doesn't bother some people. Sound configuration, I just ha have set to auto. You have all these settings for headphones. I just set it to the headphones and put this on auto. That has, so far, not screwed me over. I can hear footsteps fairly well when there's not a lot of things happening. I have noticed recently sometimes footsteps don't come through in 64 player, but for the most part, this kind of does well for what I'm looking for. Uh, subtitles, do what you want with these, personal preference. Last thing I'm gonna kind of go over is the on foot settings and the vehicle settings for my helicopter. Just, you guys can, you know, do what you want with that. but. Your sensitivity is going to be based on your personal comfort levels, okay? I personally play on an extremely fast sensitivity. So I play on 38 for infantry play with 800 DPI. My default for all of my games besides Counter-Strike is 800 DPI. I played on 400 DPI for Counter-Strike. There's a reason for that. We're not getting into it. 38 with 800 DPI gives me an 11.5 centimeter 360, meaning I have to move my mouse 11 and a half inches on my mouse pad, or centimeters on my mouse pad to do a full 360 rotation of the character model in the game. Again, field of views 105, ADS field of views on. These are all default stuff, guys. I really didn't change much of these, if at all. Also, the other thing is I have uniform soldier aiming off. This does not work properly in the game. I know Baranox is a super aim guru, and he says to have this set number. I can't remember what it is. I think it's 166. Um, so you can play with this and turn it on if you want. I personally have it off because the input is so bad for both controllers still, even with the slight aim assist fixed, so people are having issues with it. Mouse input is so bad, I have just have this off. I don't want to deal with it. I would like to have this on, but because it doesn't work, I don't care. I just keep it off. And everything else, all this zoom sensitivities aren't changed. For the vehicles, aim sensitivity is going to be the gunner seats, not the actual turret movement. So if you're driving the vehicle, that is not what this is. And here you go. Excuse me. Aircraft control sensitivity and aircraft and uh, helicopter. So aircraft are the jets, helicopter, helicopters. That includes the transports. Turn this off if you're a decent pilot. This is gonna help you auto level the aircraft if you're struggling to keep it in the sky. The game still automatically tries to level the helicopter even with this off and it's very annoying, but turn it off. Uh, I haven't touched any of this stuff. Uniform vehicle aiming is off. Again, just doesn't work. Uh, I do fly with mouse and keyboard and I do rifle aim. So gunner zoom, driver zoom, airplane zoom, helicopter zoom, you know, that's all on here. All of my movements with the helicopter, I've had a lot of people ask me, and even in game, they're you know they're asking, hey, you know what controller are you, you always flying on a controller? I'm like, no, I fly a mouse and keyboard. All of my yaw movement with the helicopter is on the mouse. The only thing that is on WSAD is the the rudders, right? Rudder left, rudder right, and then climb and descend are on WNS. Everything else, including zooming and shooting, is on the mouse, which is quote unquote rifle aim. Apparently, I'm not a vehicle main or a guru in that area, but I do like to fly the helicopter, so that is what I was told it is. And if, uh, it's really it. I don't really change a whole lot for key bindings or anything like that. As you can see, aim up, aim down, you see how this is all on the mouse or the keys, which I don't even have these keys because I have a 60% mouse. So aim right, aim left is on the mouse. Aim up, aim down is up and down on the mouse. So. That's all I got for you guys. Hope that was helpful. If you have anything else you want to see or any other questions about anything else, let me know in the comments below. If this was helpful for you guys, I'd appreciate a like or a, or a, a subscribe on the YouTube. Or you can even just come to the Twitch channel and come say, hey, yeah, I like it, whatever. Whatever you guys want. doesn't matter to me. I appreciate y'all. I'll catch you in the next video.